solo podcast again because Bill and I can't seem to get our act together with scheduling and in real in reality, uh, you know, he's trying to get into a new uh, location and trying to set up a temporary studio. So there's a lot of logistics going on. He did a pretty nice solo episode uh, last week, so I wanted to do a real a short one today. I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys don't want to listen to me talk for a long time, but this is something, you know, I, I tend to go on rants, right? And it's usually for a good reason, um, and it's usually due to some kind of public health recommendation or something that is, I think is really missing the mark. Um, so I've had a couple people last several months and even recently – these are young, healthy people, for the most part, that I train with. Um, and they're like, hey, you know, I'm worried about doing these electrolyte replacements because I'm worried about my high blood pressure. You know, and I have to kind of hold myself back a little bit. I'm like, why are you worried about high blood pressure? Then I thought about it. I'm like, why well, understand? Because the messaging has been crazy. It's almost as, it's probably just as bad as the whole you know, eating dietary cholesterol is going to raise your cholesterol. It makes my head blow up, right? But this eating salt causing high blood pressure, there's a lot more to it than that. And if you're a young, healthy person, and just to, you know, let's get it all the way right now. You're young and healthy doing jujitsu. You know, you really don't need to worry about that. And I'll get into it a little more. So let's talk about high blood pressure to begin with. So it is incredibly complex, and, and honestly, you know, a lot of the theories behind it of what causes it are just that. We've seen a ton of associations of different things like, oh, salt intake, you know, causes high blood pressure is the, is the main one that we're trying to fight here. Now, like many things, there are some half-truths or quarter-truths behind some of that, but we need to kind of delve into it a little more to really um, talk about, you know, who are we talking about when we're uh, giving recommendations? Uh, and unfortunately, it's, you know, a lot of these public health recommendations are given to the general population without a lot of nuance to them. So high blood pressure, um, I have a, a little notes here. I just don't want to forget anything. It's it's highly complex. Um there's a huge genetic component. There is a big time metabolic component. In other words, are you metabolically healthy? Do you have early insulin resistance? Do you have prediabetes, diabetes? That makes a huge difference. Um, and the underlying kind of driver theoretically is inflammation and oxidative stress or, you know, free radical formation. So I've said this before, Insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, whatever you want to call it, and certainly diabetes, is a big time inflammatory, chronic inflammatory disorder. Okay, it's really that's why it's so bad for you. That's why it causes so many problems. And uh, unfortunately, the American population, very few of us, when I say relatively so, are metabolically healthy nowadays. You know, a lot of us are, are carrying a little more weight than we need to, which is inflammatory. That insulin resistance is inflammatory and causes this oxidative stress. That's one of the main drivers behind high blood pressure. Um, again, like I talked about, there's a genetic component as well, too. So, you know, if you have a strong family history of high blood pressure, there you are more susceptible. You have to be more careful. Um, and believe it or not, there's actually new research showing that the composition of your gut microbiota, we've talked about gut health before, I think long ago, a couple of years ago, where that really, the gut microbiome or microbiota, um, microbiome is the genetic portion, microbiota is the actual bacterial composition, really drives a lot of our health. You can think of it as another organ system and a very important one. And they're actually showing now that um, disruptions in that actually can predispose to that whole inflammatory response, oxidative stress, uh, getting the central nervous system kind of keyed up to cause vasoconstriction and um, high blood pressure. So my point of all this is there is a ton of reasons to call to for high blood pressure to be developed. And 
even in the medical community acknowledges this. We call it essential hypertension or primary hypertension. We're like, okay, what does that mean? We don't have a disa- an exact causal mechanism um, as opposed to there's, there's some rare cases of what we call secondary hypertension with some really odd zebras in the medical world. Uh, you don't need to know this, but just, just for interest, you know, feel like pheochromocytoma, which is a interesting tumor that actually causes um, high blood pressure. So if you are healthy and your kidneys are working well, the, the, the body really tries to maintain a very, very strict range of sodium, especially. Okay. Sodium is crucial for our cells for all, I mean, throughout the body, through for all our metabolic functions, for so many reasons. And going too high or going too low can cause real, real problems. So the kidneys are the primary way we get rid of this stuff and or, or hold on to it, uh, depending on what the needs are. Now, the recommendations right now for the general public, I believe, if I remember right, it's like 2.3 grams per day. Um, And I think the World Health Organization is even lower, like two grams per day of sodium intake, which is, in my opinion, very low and probably and for sure with the average jujitsu person that's pretty healthy and, and exercises like we do, losing all that sweat, it's way too low. And that's the kind of the crux of this talk today, because using these recommendations and thinking, oh, I don't want to add any more salt for a jiu-jitsu practitioner, especially in a hot climate or in a gym that's really warm inside and you're losing a ton of sweat, not actually can not only be bad advice, but can be catastrophic in some cases. Okay, so this is uh, really important. We kind of talk about this today. So let's talk about um, diet. Okay, so processed food is... Sure, it's packed with salt and uh, a bunch of other stuff um, to make it more palatable, namely sugar, various fats. Um, adding salt to it makes it even more palatable. Um, that's why that means you want to eat it and want to crave it. That's why it's in everything. Now, if you already have a diagnosis of high blood pressure, excess salt could raise it a bit. Not terribly a lot, but, but enough. And those are called salt sensitive people. And typically they're people that are already have high blood pressure, already have some kind of insulin resistance, metabolic problems. So sure, that makes sense to kind of, uh, Hey, let's, let's drop back on some of our processed food we're eating and eat real food. And, um, that alone will put you in a normal range of salt intake. Um, so that's the caveat. So I'm not saying that absolutely in every person increased salt intake or too much salt doesn't contribute to high blood pressure. I'm just saying that we've said, you know, we act like it's this causative thing that can turn a healthy person um, into a hypertensive. And that just is not the case. So here's the ugly other side of this. So back in my younger days, I think I'd been a doctor maybe, I don't know, two or three years, um, I volunteered for, um, a, in the medical tent of a local triathlon. And most of those triathletes have their stuff together, right? They're hydrating properly. They know, hey, this is a long, intense um, run, uh, swim, bike I'm doing. And they know how to manage these things. But we always get a significant amount of people, especially these um, ones that are, you know, advertised. And this one, I believe, was like on the boardwalk of Virginia Beach. So you got a bunch of people like, oh, I'm going to enter in this triathlon (laughs) with not much training. And those people came in, were not repleting their hydration as they were going, um, and got into a dehydrated state. And that's not why they showed up in the medical tent what happened is one of their buddies or a family member had them drink a ton of water, just water. And this is where we can get into trouble. Okay. So dehydrating yourself. And when you sweat, you lose a bunch of sodium with it. Okay. If you are like me and you sweat a lot and quickly, like you're pouring sweat, 
you don't reabsorb a lot of that sodium well, and you're losing quite a bit of it. You know, I would argue in an hour of rolling in a hot gym, you could lose two to three grams of sodium. And if you're sweating profusely and quickly, like you're not a slow sweater, or, you know, we all know the people like myself in our gym that sweat a lot. And we have to be particularly um, careful about this stuff. Because if you are sweating a lot, you're not reabsorbing a lot of that sodium that you're sweating out. Your internal stores of sodium have de- decreased. And then you just drink pure water. You're basically diluting that even more. Okay, and this is the danger. You can get into something called hyponatremia. And I saw this happen. This is why the p- person came into the medical tent. All of a sudden, this person came in confused, slurring their words, um, you know, completely fatigued. Um, and, you know, you, as a doctor, when you're training, you see someone like, hey, they don't look well, right? And the problem is, is they tried to correct their dehydration with just water. And so, dilu- again, diluting that further, you're diluting the sodium outside of the cells and through osmosis, you, you can basically make the inside of the cell swell because there's more sodium in the cell now than there is in the extracellular volume. And I know these are medical terms, but we're basically diluting one side. And then, you know, if you have more sodium inside than outside, it will draw water in and make those cells swell. Okay. And that, and especially when that happens in the nervous system and neurons, there have been cases of coma and death from this. Okay. And correcting it needs medical attention. You can't just correct it. Once you're in that state, you got to be very careful how you correct this. So my, let's, let's just not get there in the first place. So those of you coming in worrying about hydrating with salt solutions or, you know, some type of electrolyte mix, you need to not worry about it and you need to be pay close attention to doing so. Um, you know, I've had people come in like, hey, you know, they always ask me, what am I drinking? And, you know, I, I have a, a couple different brands that I like that are very clean and very have enough sodium. I usually have one with has a gram or a thousand milligrams of sodium per serving. So for us as grapplers, especially if you sweat a lot, if you stick to the 2.3 to 2 grams per day of intake, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Not only are you going to be dehydrated most of the time, but you're also setting yourself up, depending on how you replete that hydration, for some problems. So let's use me as an example. Um, almost 55 years old, hefty, heavy sweater. I mean, you can ask like Bill, and <laughs> I've dripped on them many times before. Um, I really need probably around at least five grams per day on my sweating, um, on my training days, maybe four or so before that, um, on my non-training days. So I make sure I get that, especially after training my rehydration up, up probably I, I lose at least, especially in a hot gym with a lot of rolls. I probably estimated, I probably lose a gram or two of sodium. So I make sure I at least replete that. And then the following day I have a, um, a gallon basically jug with three grams of um, electro of sodium contained in an electrolyte solution that I'll drink throughout the day at work to kind of slowly replete myself. What I'm not doing, repeat, not doing is just drinking a bunch of water. Okay. Um, it, you know, I know I'm repeating myself, but I can't say this enough for us jujitsu folks. Um, it's a real, real problem and it can, it can be dangerous actually. So how do I know? How do you know how much you need? Well, if you're healthy, you have intact kidney function, you don't have diabetes, you don't have, um, you know, any of the other kind of metabolic disorders, or you don't already have hypertension, you're not going to overdo it with some electrolyte replacement, okay? Your, your kidneys are very good at sorting out what they need to hold on to and what they don't. Now, if you already have high blood pressure, um, you know, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, prediabetes, um, be a little more careful, but you still need it, okay? And the way to know is just do some self-experimentation. By the way, 
if you do overdo it on the sodium and you're already hypertensive, it's not going to put it through the roof, okay? It's not going to add that much. So you're not going to get into some medical emergency from that. But if you do see it creeping up a little bit and you're, you know, and you kind of know how much you're taking in, back off a little bit um, with that. And that, it's just as easy as that. I'm not trying to give, again, we never give medical advice here. You know, it's between you and your doctor. But I'm just kind of giving you some information. Um, but, you know, th- this has become such an issue in you know, society now where we're getting these recommendations and they are just, um, a lot of them are just dead wrong or they're, you know, right in certain situations or they overplay it, you know. But if you ask anybody on the street that doesn't look into this stuff, they're like, oh, no, I got to eat low sodium. <laughs> What's interesting is there's actually some studies, and a lot of this in the literature is contradicted one way or another, that show that too low of a sodium diet can even stimulate the stress response can paradoxically mean, you know, give us the opposite um, outcome that we thought can actually lead to increased uh, blood pressure because the body's trying to compensate from a lower sodium because we actually need the sodium. So if you're eating pretty cleanly, what I mean by that is your food doesn't come in a package for the most part. And, you know, you're eating, you know, meat, vegetables, fruit, you know, good sources of fat, um, you definitely need to have some sodium, especially if you're training. If you're eating a bunch of processed food and you know who you are, um, you know, like Bill used to, um, he was getting plenty of sodium, right? And so he might not need, at that point, not need to replace as much. But, you know, if you're if you're like, oh, gosh, yeah, I, I got to clean it up. And over the past month, I've really gone to more, you know, actually real food. Um, and then, hey, now in training, man, I'm just feeling fatigued. I'm feeling lightheaded when I get up. Um, just, you know, just not feeling too good. You're very likely deficient in hydration and sodium. And a lot of these electrolytes work together. Um, that's why some of the better brands will have, you know, sodium, a bit of potassium, and magnesium because they all kind of work together. We don't need to go through all the mechanistic stuff behind there. It bore you to death. But that's that's kind of the the gist of this uh, talk today. Um, again, very, very, very brief. And, um, you know, I, I definitely want you to uh, submit some questions for me. Um, because this is, you know, we're going to, I feel like I'm always doing this. I feel like I've become the contrarian, like have to go against all the established recommendations. <laughs> They're not all bad, but enough of them are for whatever reason, whether it's group think, whether it's especially nutrition research that, you know, I've ranted before relies on observational data, basically questionnaires, what people are eating, you know, it's just terrible. And then they just give blanket recommendations and not think about uh, you know, special populations. I would say, uh, you know, if you really want to dive deep into recommendations for salt repletion and how to maybe calculate how much you're using, um, you know, American College of Sports Medicine has some pretty decent stuff on this. Um, I know uh, Rob Wolf, um, you guys may know him, He he's done a deep dive into this stuff and he, you know he actually has a company he owns that makes one of these products you know a lot of, on first glance you're like oh that's a conflict of interest but I've listened to the guy for years and he's pretty much a straight shooter and his stuff is pretty solid so I'm sure he has some resources too um, highly recommend it um, but that's the big here's the just to kind of recap the take home if you already have high blood pressure you already have diabetes pre-diabetes yeah, sure, you know, watch your intake of sodium. But as you're trying to get your health under control, like decreasing processed food, you know, now I've just started training jujitsu, so, you know, maybe really pay attention to how you're feeling because you may need to start adding that stuff back in. But again, even if you are um, on, uh, if you are on hypertensive medication or have, you know, do have high blood pressure, just remember it's not going to, if you err a little bit, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's not going to increase to the point where it's dangerous and just pay attention to it. 
But if you're a healthy athletic person with no metabolic problems, your kidneys will handle, you, you can play around with it some and see what the sweet spot is for you. Again, I think probably around, for me, it's about five grams. I've seen people, you know, for athletes, especially jujitsu, four to six grams per day. That's total. But if you're a crazy sweater like myself and a couple other folks I know, um, you might even need more. So just, just see how you're feeling with that. Again, this is one of those things I thought I had to do a little public service announcement on because I think people were just too scared um, to do something that's actually good for their health. Um, so send anything, any questions, comments, concerns. Again, you know, this is a short one, about 20 minutes. Um, I promise Bill and I will have our um, stuff together here soon, especially as he kind of puts his studio together. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, look forward to seeing you soon.